Друзі, черговий брифінг. Good morning, friends. Another briefing on the propaganda and fakes of the aggressor country. The air attack on Kramatorsk remains the number one topic. Once again, Russia is trying to shift responsibility for this terrible crime onto Ukraine in every way it can, traditionally throwing in a variety of fakes through its anonymous and propaganda channels to disclaim responsibility for this bloody air attack. In fact, there is more than enough evidence that Russia was behind these actions, these deaths in Kramatorsk. Well, first of all, professional bodies, among them the US Pentagon, report that the missile strike, namely from the Tochka U complex at the railway station in Kramatorsk, which killed more than 50 people, was carried out by the Russian military, despite attempts by the Russian commanders to deny responsibility. This is indicated by the intelligence data and aerial footage available to the Ministry of Defense. But in order not to be one-sided, let's have a look at what one of the ideologists of this war, unfortunately a former member of parliament of Ukraine and in recent months one of the potential Gauleiter in Ukraine, as he was called in the Western media, Oleg Tsarov, said about the air attack, namely regarding the railway station. He wrote directly on his social media the following. Life military force from Western Ukraine, as well as offensive heavy equipment and artillery from Europe, comes in by rail from the West to Eastern Ukraine. Sometimes one wishes one could give a school counter map of Ukraine's railroads to decision makers. If they looked at it, it would become clear that at maximum three strokes could paralyze all traffic for many months. This is what Tsarov wrote on social media this week, the week that this terrible attack against Kramatorsk took place. In fact, through these public media, he was not just calling for, but announcing beforehand the plans of the aggressor country. Meanwhile, the aggressor country has been trying to manipulate public opinion in the occupied territories and has been trying to create fake authorities in the occupied cities in order to pull to its side. Through these fake authorities, those citizens of Ukraine who have become hostages of Russian aggression, those who have suffered directly from Russia. So we are talking about Mariupol. A pseudo city mayor appeared there. He is a member of parliament from the pro-Russian Medvedchuk's political party, opposition platform for life, Konstantin Ivashchenko. A so-called decree was issued by the so-called head of the so-called Donetsk People's Republic, Pushilin, who appointed Ivashchenko to this position as head of the Mariupol city administration. In other words, the familiar scenario that we saw in both Melitopol and Energodar is ongoing. The creation of fake authorities with the subsequent seizure of control in these cities and the subsequent struggle for public opinion in these cities. This member of parliament, Ivashenko, has already been informed of the suspicion of state treason. The decision was made by the prosecutor's office on the basis of the pre-trial investigation conducted by the Department of the Security Service of Ukraine in Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Another fake in recent days that needs to be uncovered is that, unfortunately, we have reached the point where the direct source of fakes is the Russian political leadership, namely the Speaker of the State Duma Volodin, who made a statement accusing the Ukrainian leadership of allegedly fleeing the territory of Ukraine. He was commenting on the situation in Bucha, another case of shameful and brutal attack against civilians by Russia, and to clear himself of responsibility, he repeated the narrative that Russia promotes through its political and media agents of influence. Among other things, Volodin said, a staged performance and a show designed for a Western audience, where the same headlines and photos were published in foreign media as if by order. Let me remind you that this has already been proven by satellite imagery and international human rights organizations, such as Human Rights Watch, that it was during the Russian occupation of Bucha that these crimes were committed. So, what Volodin says further is that, you think about it, US President Joe Biden immediately called for sanctions, and Ukrainian President Zelensky, who was sitting somewhere on a NATO base, urgently arrived to Bucha. Let me remind you that this was declared, that President Zelensky has not left the territory of Ukraine and has been in Kyiv for the whole time. And such senior officials as Volodin, who personally speak fakes, this once again proves that lies are part of the state policy of Russia. 
And this is another reason for each of us not to believe in Russian propaganda, to trust only the official mass media of Ukraine, to trust Ukrainian armed forces and Ukrainian political leadership. See you.